about 60 to 80 percent of people, mostly aged 15 to 25, occasionally have goosebump-inducing deja vu moments. It's fleeting and unpredictable, and scientists are still not 100 percent sure why it happens and can't control it. To understand it better, they tried to create memories for patients under hypnosis. Then, they asked them to forget or remember the memory, and it made them experience deja vu later. Other scientists tried to recreate it in virtual reality with scenes and games that looked alike. The experiments made them believe deja vu is your memory playing tricks on you. You get into a situation that's similar to a real memory that you have, but you can't remember it completely. Your brain notices the similarities and leaves you with a strange feeling of already seen. That's how deja vu translates from French. Another version is that it's a memory glitch. It's more likely to happen when you're stressed. When you're under pressure or have a lot of information to process at once, some of it can end up in long-term memory instead of short-term memory. It could also be the result of a sudden electrical discharge of neurons in the brain that creates false connections. One guy had the chronic version of deja vu and felt stuck in a time loop for eight years. He even stopped watching TV, listening to the radio, and reading newspapers because he always felt like he had seen it all before. Each episode lasted for minutes and it felt like living in a weird movie. His brain scans looked normal though, so it must have been a psychological issue. Between 40 and 60% of people experience the opposite of deja vu. It's the feeling when you don't recognize a well-familiar setting, like the house you grew up in or a person. A word you've known your entire life can also suddenly seem strange, and even your own face in the mirror. If your second cousin claims he's an expert in geography, and then argues Paris is the capital of Italy at a family party, he's probably driven by the Dunning-Kruger effect. People who are incompetent in something aren't able to assess their skill level. They refuse to recognize their own mistakes and the expertise of other people. It happens because you need the same knowledge and skills to be good at something as to recognize you aren't good at it. Even a tiny bit of knowledge can sometimes make you believe you're an expert at something. The more you study the subject, the more you realize there's still a lot to learn. That's why people who know a lot about something often underestimate their skills and doubt what they know. So, when in doubt, ask other people you trust for feedback. Horoscopes and personality test results often feel as if they were written just about you because of the Barnum effect. Your brain fills in the gaps in vague and general statements that could be true for anyone to make you link them with your life. It works especially well with positive statements, as your brain normally treats negative ones more skeptically. Entertainment websites and apps now use this effect to sell you so-called personalized products. When you have a bad hair day or an oil stain on your white shirt, you're sure everyone is staring at you because of the spotlight effect. When you're focused on something, your brain makes you believe everyone else is focused on that as well. You're naturally the center of your own universe, and you see the world through your experiences and perspective. Others do the same, so don't worry about that stain. When you're eating out before an important job interview, you may feel like everyone in the room knows exactly how nervous you are at that moment. This brain trick is called the illusion of transparency. It's caused by the same reasons as the spotlight effect. A good way to get over it is to remember others don't have full access to your thoughts and feelings, and they can't read your mind. The halo effect is the reason why you judge someone's actions based on how much you like them. When you find someone good looking, your brain often makes a conclusion that they're also smart and nice. When a person is positive and enthusiastic at work, it can often overshadow their lack of skills and make others see them as better professionals than they really are. When you dislike someone, everything about them, like the way they speak or chew, drives you nuts. As negative episodes connected with that person pile up, the related neural connections in your brain become stronger and make you only focus on all the bad that they do. 
The brain even distorts facts about them to fit your view and blinds you from noticing the good things that they do. Confirmation bias makes you look for confirmation of what you believe in everything. You gather information, selectively ignoring even the obvious facts that oppose your existing ideas. That's why when you're browsing the internet, you're more likely to notice materials that support your opinion on the matter. It's a way for your brain to somehow sort and process limitless amounts of information surrounding you. Plus, knowing that your point of view is accurate helps your self-esteem. Anchoring is a mind trick that makes you stick to the first impression of someone or something and affects your decisions. When you see a $10 frappuccino on top of the menu at a coffee shop, a $5 Americano seems like a bargain. You get it without thinking it's still too much, because the first price you saw was way higher. To stop anchoring from forcing you into bad decisions, you got to find more info and weigh all the options. When an emergency happens and you expect someone else to step in and help, that's the bystander effect in action. The more bystanders are around, the less chance there is any of them will do something. It makes you feel less personal responsibility. Because of social influence, you look at others and copy their behavior of doing nothing. If you say, oh, I'm mad you're here, instead of, oh, I'm glad you're here, that's a classic Freudian slip. They're real windows into your unconscious mind. They happen mostly when you're tired or emotionally overwhelmed. Your brain takes advantage of it and tricks you into saying what you're most scared to say. Your brain will always convince you you fail because of reasons outside your control. You got bad test results because your dog never stopped barking and didn't let you study. You broke that vase because your phone rang and scared you. All these made-up excuses are your brain's attempt to protect your self-esteem and stop your fear of failure. When you succeed at something, you always believe it's the result of your skills and efforts. Even if it was by accident, your brain will convince you you completely deserve it. Declinism is the official term for remembering the past better than it was and seeing the present and the future in overly negative light. It makes you believe things are worse now than they once used to be. TV and media are partially to blame for this. You get to see tons of negative and shocking news, which confirms your beliefs the present is scary and the future uncertain. It also happens because of the old survival instinct. To pass on genes, people constantly had to watch out for threats and dangers. When your new colleague leaves the flash drive with a group project at home, you conclude she's a bad and irresponsible person. When you do the same, it's because of some unfortunate circumstances. That's fundamental attribution error. You explain mistakes of others with their bad personality, and your own with some external factors. Your memory doesn't work like a video camera that records every moment exactly like it happened. It's way more fragile and inaccurate. It's rather easy to distort someone's memories or even create false ones. It can be as easy as showing someone a video they didn't take part in to make them believe they were there. You also forget a lot of information, from useless everyday details to important stuff. A forgetful brain works like a filter that sorts out painful experiences from the past and makes room for new memories.